Hello everyone, this is Gian. I'm back with another video. So as you can see here, this is uh, Mortal Kombat Aftermath. Anybody who's been uh, a fan of my channel for a while now knows that uh, I am a very avid Mortal Kombat fan and I've been quite critical of Mortal Kombat 11. In particular, what they did to the female characters and the female character designs. So... You had to know that uh, when when this uh, storyline DLC trailer thing dropped, I was going to cover it. So for those who are new to the channel and haven't seen my uh, previous videos, I'll just give a brief overview. Uh, I'm a big Mortal Kombat fan, particularly of the original series of games back in the 1990s. The very first Mortal Kombat game came out in 1992 when I was 7 years old. The first MK game I ever played was Mortal Kombat 3, which came out in 95, which would have made me 10 when that game came out. And my favorite MK game ever of the ones that I played growing up, and I played every title from the first one to Armageddon eventually, is Mortal Kombat. It's a tie between MK3 and MK Trilogy. And that trilogy came out in um, 1996, so I would have been about... Um, 11 years old, or rather, I got a trilogy as a as a Christmas gift. I got it as a Christmas gift. So uh, December, I would have been around 11, going on 12 years old at that time. So I literally grew up with the with the series, and even though I am not a fan of the reboot, I haven't played nine, ten, or eleven. I never agreed with the uh, reboot. This the the series still does mean something to me. I can't let go. <laughs> I guess that's that's a flaw we all have, you know. I I invested time and money over over the years, and uh, even though I'm again not a fan of the reboot, having played MK11, there have been so many changes. Uh, to Mortal Kombat 11, in particular, female characters and character designs, the uh, terribly received um, retcon to Sindel and Jax's woke ending and, and all this stuff that I've actually made a lot of videos on MK11, despite initially saying that I wasn't going to. Life comes at you fast. But anyway, so I've watched... This trailer, I've actually watched this trailer several times now in the making of this video. And what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to take you through the trailer and explain it. And then as I go through it, bring up whatever um, issues, concerns, likes, dislikes I have about that particular part of the trailer. So be warned, it's going to be... A long and bumpy ride. And of course, as always, I hope everybody is uh, doing well on this day. So, let's get started. So, this trailer opens up with Raiden and uh, Lightning God, uh, Fire God, Liu Kang, trying to restart history after the defeat of uh, Kronika. And not even 20 minutes in, not 20 minutes, sorry, 20 seconds in, I'm wondering, okay, I'm looking at this image, I'm like, okay, where is Kitana? Where is Princess Kitana? Where is Lu's other half? I really don't see Lu Kang, of all people, right, making such a critical decision as restarting time, restarting history, because apparently it just seems to, to be him and Raiden at first, Raiden task him with restarting the uh, hourglass or whatever the heck it's called. And I'm like, okay, where's Kitana? Lou is not the type to make a decision this heavy, this weighty without her. They're like the ultimate Mortal Kombat good guy power couple. And yet at this most pivotal moment, pivotal je uh, juncture, right? The biggest task Lou's probably ever had. Kitana's not, not here? That don't sound right. That, 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 that doesn't sound right in the least. Remember the last time when a man got the ability to um, restart time? Do you remember Jax and what he did? We don't want that again. Thank you very much. 
But anyway, before Lu can get started, here comes Shang Tsung, Night Wolf, and Fujin. Now I gotta admit, Fujin, I'm like, okay, you've now just thrown the current the the current continuity for a loop because there are intros with Frost, for example, that that Raiden has where Frost says that she froze Fujin for Cetrion. And then in Raiden's intros with Cetrion, uh, she tells him sarcastically to reunite with uh, Fujin. And, and then when Raiden says that he won't fall without a storm, Cetrion says uh, that, uh, how sad, he said much the same, of course, referring to Fujin. So we know Fujin in, in MK11 lore proper is dead or, or otherwise out of commission. Now, to be fair, um, Nightwolf, Shang, and Fujin are supposed to be coming from some point in the past. But given that Naughty... I'm about to call him Naughty Dog, that ain't it. <laughs> but given that Netherrealm can't even figure out who killed King Gerard, did Sindel do it? Did Devora do it? Did Shao Kahn do it? They can't even figure, figure that one out anymore. I'm not exactly with the idea of them again doing some sort of weird time travel plot. But I will float the idea that this is supposed to be Fujin from an earlier time before he was ambushed by Frost and Cetrion. So anyway, Shang explains that when they defeated and destroyed Kronika, they also destroyed Kronika's crown. And according to him, you need Kronika's crown to restart time. So Shang's proposal is that Lu and Raiden send him, Fujin, and Nightwolf back into the past to go and retrieve the crown off his island. So the first thing I'm wondering is, okay, now we're going back to the past. What is this? Samurai Jack? Back to the past. Back to the past. Samurai Shang. Watch And second... Didn't we already have this, you know, send one of the characters to go fetch a magical artifact thing in MK Mythologies Sub-Zero? It seems like a, like a bit of a, a rehash to me. But anyhow, Raiden, for once in life in the reboot, actually says something very intelligent. He says, why should we trust you, Shang? You're a snake. And Shang acknowledges that he's a snake, but that he's a snake who's worked with Kronika, so he knows her, and he knows her secrets. So, he's sent back into the past, and Lu says that they're going to need help. So, help seems to be in the form of two characters, at least, when it comes to this trailer. The first, as we see here, is Shiva. And who do I have things to say about Shiva, number one, Shokan don't wear armor. <laughs> their body is their armor. Their muscles are their armor. Look at Shiva in Mortal Kombat 3. Look at Goro. The Shokan don't wear armor they never have. What Mortal Kombat fan ever asked for a Shiva as clad in armor, Netherrealm, what are you doing? More importantly, though, or per perhaps in addition to, I am... <laughs> they have masculinized Shiva so much, it hurts. It hurts me. It, like, physically causes me pain to look at this version of Shiva. And they haven't just masculinized her in appearance, they have also masculinized her in her voice. Now, I want to be clear. I'm not blaming the voice actress. She's just doing a job. But the way Shiva talks, and you'll, if you watch the trailer, you will, you will hear it. She speaks in this overly deep voice, as if she's impersonating a deep-voiced man. For example, it would be if I did this. Hello, my name is John. Right? That's, a, that, that's an over-exaggeration. Right? That, that is not, in most cases at least, that is not 
the voice of a deep-voiced woman. In Mortal Kombat, MK11 in particular, has plenty of women who have deep, raspy voices. There is Cetrion, who is voiced by Mary Elizabeth McGlynn. She has a very deep voice. Uh, the voice actress for uh, Frost, right? She has a very deep, raspy voice, right? The voice actress for Sindel, her voice is deep. And although it's not in MK11, right? In MK10, the, the, the few lines that Sindel had, she was voiced by the same woman who voices Ivy in the Soul Calibur game. So there are certainly plenty of deep voiced... Oh, and then of course there's uh, Jennifer Hale who voices Kronika. And Kronika has a very deep voice. And we know Jennifer Hale can affect the deep voice because she also voiced Femshep and gave Femshep a very deep, smoky, heavy voice in the Mass Effect game. So we know that it is possible to have deep-voiced women who still sound like women in the in these games. But instead, whoever the voice director is, right, decided to have the voice actress sound, in my opinion, way too deep. It sounds more like she's impersonating a dude instead of just having a naturally heavy voice. And if the voice actress does have that heavy a voice, okay, not her fault, but you have um, technology where you can make a voice higher, lower, softer, whatever. And if, and if she's a voice actress, I would imagine that she's at least uh, uh, fairly talented at affecting different voices because you have to be a voice actor. You have to be able to, to do different types of voices. So whatever the situation is, I strongly disagree with the way Sindel look. Not 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 Sindel, sorry. Uh, with the way Shiva looks and the way Shiva sounds, it is overly masculine. And you know that if they give her an MK3 skin, right? Since now she will actually be be playable and um, DLC most likely in time. If they give her a MK3 era skin like they did Sonya and Kulao and a few other characters, they're not going to give her this skin because this is way, way, way too risque. This is 1995. This is back when you could actually do something like this. I would imagine that, they're that if they give her a Mortal Kombat 3 skin eventually, that they're going to... Uh, you know, cover her up because you can't be showing skin if you are female these days. The dudes can run around topless, but you dare show any boob, and and you're 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 just unsightly and un and unseemly now, right? But they're not gonna going to give her this look. They'll they would, in my estimation, what they would probably do is give her a a modest bikini and then of course tone down those uh those uh, big old biddies of hers right because apparently they've never seen female bodybuilders especially female bodybuilders who are miss olympia champions for those wondering this is uh i think her name is uh lender murray eight time miss olympia obviously you can still have a powerful yet feminine look I will never understand why Netherrealm decided to further masculinize a female character that already had a very unconventional, non-traditional female appearance. Look at that head. Look at the look at that hair. If that ain't Grace Jones, I don't know what is. But instead of just, you know, giving us the Shiva that you know, many fans know and are familiar with, they decide to just make her even more mannish, as if she wasn't, um, again, non-traditional enough. So thank you, Netherrealm. Thank you for taking my favorite character in all the Mortal Kombat games, my favorite female character, and making her unrecognizable and offensive to me. Thanks a flippin' lot. <laughs> But anyway, now we go to the second helper character, Sindel. Queen Sindel, who apparently is being resurrected again. How many times is it now? <laughs> Three, four, a hundred times? 
Y'all are gonna give Fourth Snake a conniption. Leave the poor man alone. But anyhow, it looks like damn city noises. <laughs> it looks like Sindel is being resurrected again, and it looks like in from this model here in the cutscene, and her um, in-game model in Mortal Kombat 11. It seems here that her model in Aftermath, her, her jaw looks a little rounder. Her features in general look a little softer. Whereas it looks a little more sharp and square here in MK11+. Plus, as you can see here in the Mortal Kombat 11 version, right, that, that prominent streak of um, black hair right in the center of, of her uh, head is not present here. It right? looks like it's just that gray, gray hair. For the most part, so minor changes, but I just find it interesting given that this is supposed to be in the past and this is supposed to be the current version of Sindel. So it's like, where did these changes come from? But anyhow, I honestly think that what they're going to do here, this is just what I think, what I believe. I'm not saying there's any confirmation yet. What I think is that they're going to use this opportunity, use this uh, uh, story DLC to retcon Sindel again because for those who may not be familiar originally in Mortal Kombat 3 when Sindel was originally introduced she was introduced as a villainess but then it's discovered that she was a good person all along and that she had been brainwashed into villainy and that was pretty much the way she, she had remained in, in all of the games she had been featured in since up until Mortal Kombat 11, where she was retconned to have been evil all along. So what I think they are going to do uh, to sort of fix this, given that this turn of a character, this heel turn, if you want to call it, uh, to use a pro wrestling term, was not well received at all, that... I think they are going to use this up as an opportunity to retcon the retcon. You know, the retcon that they claimed during the uh, combat cast was not shenanigans, and the retcon that they said was the real lore, although we had the real lore since 1995. Yeah, I think what they're going to do is that one of two things, and I, and I could be totally wrong, I could be totally off base, not saying that's impossible. But what I think is either they're going to use this opportunity since Shang in this one is apparently resurrecting her. Again, I'm just going by the, uh, the uh, trailer. It seems like Shang is resurrecting her. So they could either be that Shang resurrects her and resurrects her as she should be. Because remember, he is allied with, at least at, at, at this moment, with Nightwolf, who is a good guy, with Fujin, who is a good guy. And with Shiva, who had at one time served as 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 Sindel's personal protector, so he has three people there that are going to to hold him to task if he does anything wrong. Plus, there is a point later in the trailer where I think it's Fujin where he says that Sin Sindel could be a, a valuable ally to us, and again. Fujin is a is a good guy. He's always been a good guy. And supposedly this is a version of him from the past who hasn't met Cetrion and Frost yet, so there's no need to think or believe his personality or, or his allegiances have been retconned. At least I hope not. You never know with Netherrealm. But anyhow, given that, and again, it's a trailer, right? I, it, I could totally be off base, but given what I see in this trailer, either either they are, they are going, in my opinion, to retcon Sindel's heel turn by either having Shang resurrect her properly, right, and bring her back as herself, unbrainwashed, or they're going to use this as a way to explain that or rather, I should say, as a way to explain her her MK11 self. So that, oh, Shang resurrected her, and without anybody noticing or anybody knowing that he brought her back wrong, right? Or that he brainwashed her at some point, and that that will be the explanation as to why 
she is evil in Mortal Kombat 11. Regardless of which one they go with, if they if they do what I'm thinking, and they use this to retcon the uh, retcon in some fashion, regardless of what it is, it still takes you back basically to her origins in MK3, where she was an evil brainwashed queen, and then as we see through Kitana's ending and then her own ending, that once the brainwashing is broken, she's a good person after all. So if they do that, they'll just be resetting it. Which, I actually, I'm trying, I'm, I'm of like two opinions here if this is what happens. Because on the one hand, it's like, okay, if they do this. It's like, okay, Netherrealm is listening to criticism. They're listening to fan outrage and fan backlash. And they're trying to, to respond and fix it and make fans happy. At the same time, it's like the outrage and and the fan backlash never would have happened had they just left Sindel alone and just left her as she was. They created the backlash by completely retconning everything she had ever been up until this particular game. That's what so many fans, myself included, Fourth Snake included, many other people included, we're so upset about. So, again, I could be totally off base. They could maybe change nothing. But I think they are going to use this to try to get themselves back in the fans' good graces as regards this character in some fashion. And to me, I think it, I, I'm of the opinion where it's like, yes, nice, thank you. But also, um, you're, a, you're a day late and a dollar short, right? I don't know, but that's just me. But anyhow, the one of the big reveals in the trailer is that they're going to be having Robocop in the game, right? He's one of the many guest characters that they've had. They've had Terminator, they've had Joker, and several others. So, my opinion of this is this. I'm pretty indifferent. As, as I've stated in other videos, I'm not a big fan of DLC guest characters from different franchises. Though I will say the Spawn DLC is probably the best one that they've done. Because Spawn fits in uh, amazingly well in the Mortal Kombat universe because they basically recreated Spawn and Scorpion. But anyway... That was, the, that was the only one where I sincerely thought, yes, this is a great addition. Perfect. The other ones I've been pretty neutral and ambivalent about. Now, on the one hand, I can see why they included RoboCop, right? They included Terminator. Mortal Kombat's had, had cyber characters, cyber robots, Sector, Cyrax, Smoke, Cyber, Sub, Sub-Zero and all this. And they all started in MK3 back in 1995. So for that reason alone, it makes sense to bring in characters like Terminator or Robocop if you can. So as an idea, I'm not against it. I'm just very meh and neutral about it. What I will say is this, because according to Ed Boon, Right, Peter Weller is voicing RoboCop. There's a part where uh, RoboCop speaks, and all I have to say is this: with all due respect to Peter Weller, the the RoboCop voice in this game and the RoboCop voice in the films are two entirely different things. His voice is too high in the Mortal Kombat 11 um, DLC. I actually listened both to that and to several clips of RoboCop speaking from the original film. Robocop's voice is deeper, right? It's more like, your move, creep, that type of thing. Weller's voice as Robocop here, and I'm not trying to, to be mean, but I'm just saying, in the DLC, it's more like, your move, creep. I'm like, that's way too high. It's way too high. What I think is, personal, what I think uh, should be done or should have been done, who knows, this is all, you know, after the uh, fact anyway, essentially. But what I think is, if they get an Alex Murphy skin, which they probably will, have Peter Weller voice Alex Murphy. Then he can use his higher, more natural tone. And then have another actor who can approximate the RoboCop voice 
do the RoboCop voice. I will say, though, from a purely visual perspective, uh, from what I've seen, it looks great. It looks just like the 1987 film RoboCop. They even got the lower jaw right with the uh, lips and everything. Look, Peter Weller has, has, has promise, prominent, very visible, distinctive lips. I've always noticed that even as a little kid when I saw the RoboCop film or the edited version of the film, they would air on TV. I'm just saying. They got that part right. Yeah, that's, that's all I'm saying. So another thing that we learn in the uh, trailer here is that they are bringing back friendships. Friendship? Friendship? Again? For those who may not know, the friendship is an alternate finishing move to the fatality. And it was originally introduced in Mortal Kombat 2 back in 1994. And... As it says here, this is taken from the um, MK Wikia fandom page or whatnot. It says here that it is generally accepted that the introduction of friendships to Mortal Kombat was intended to mock the parental outcry back in 1992 over the first game and its very violent content. And then, of course, they added babalities and whatnot later. I will say... Oops, sorry. <laughs> I will say that uh, I am surprised that they brought this function back, that they brought it back, uh, given that they had originally introduced it when, uh, rather, rather I should say, originally introduced it as a means to mock the parental guardians who were, who were giving them uh, grief. But now uh, it's back. I have nothing against it. I think alternate finishers are fine. I know that they had um, they had friendships and babalities in I, I think MK9 because basically nine was was supposed to be a soft reboot of the first three games. So I'm not against this return. I guess I'm just a little sur surprised given the origins of the friendship. First. They wanted to mock people who were complaining about the game, and now they're bringing this back intentionally. But then again, as, as we've seen with the female costumes and that huge debate, Naughty Dog has in a way sort of become those moral guardians themselves in a way. So maybe it's not so uh, uh, surprising. I did see a few of the friendships. Uh, I saw Scorpions here, where he does the get over here and pulls a big old teddy bear to him. There's one with um, Noob Saibot, where he's doing this very elaborate um, jump rope routine. There's another one where um, Kano is literally um, grilling sausages. <laughs> and um, my favorite one is probably, at least the ones that we've seen so far, is probably the one with... Um, Sub Zero, where he like jumps up and down like a little boy, and he runs off screen, and then he comes back with um, a little bicycle ice cream cart, and then he makes himself um, uh, a blue icy. So I'm guessing that he's taking the uh, name of uh, Grandmaster Blueberry Ice very seriously, right? So okay, have fun. Though as some people have mentioned. Uh, I wonder how this is going to factor in with the Joker, given that one of his finishers in the uh, game uh, is sort of a gag, right? It starts out looking like a friendship, and then it turns it into a fatality. So I wonder if they're going to do something like, it looks like a fatality at first, but then it turns into a friendship. You think of something like that gag that you see at times where like someone has a gun and it looks like they're gonna shoot another person in the head, but then you realize that the gun is fake and then it fires like uh, confetti or something. I don't know, I don't know. I'm just floating ideas, I'm just floating ideas. But anyway, as I revealed a little bit earlier, cause I forget the order of my own images, we have the Eternal Clash skin pack, which is probably my favorite part of this whole trailer and reveal which is that we are getting these uh, skins. I'm 
makes me very happy to uh, see Frost, Nin uh, Frost Lin Kuei ninja skin again. I also really like Sub Sub Zero's um, Shredder look. I've always been a fan of that. That was originally introduced in um, Mortal Kombat Deception, I think. So seeing it again makes me happy. And uh, it's always been my my second favorite costume of his, behind his original MK3 look with the suspenders and all that stuff. Now, uh, in the MK Ice and Fire video, which is where many of these images come from, as you can see with the watermark. Again, I claim none of this none none of this is my own original imagery or work. We get a cutscene. We get um. A cutscene, and, and it shows here that Shiva and Shang, and uh, uh, Fujin and Nightwolf are carrying a very elaborate purple-clad coff coffin. I think it's it's Sindel, given that it is very elaborate and uh, purple-clad. I'm almost certain that Sindel's corpse is in there, so I'm guessing they they plan to go resurrect her themselves. It looks like they're walking across the uh, Deadpool, and Shiva even says that they have to go to the uh, Soul Chamber. And according to the uh, lore, um, Sin Sindel's soul is one of many that is maintained in the Soul Chamber. So as they're walking through here, Aaron Black and some Tarkatans led by Baraka come in and try to stop them from going any further. Baraka quite literally does a smell test and quickly figures out that this uh, Shou Shokan, looking like Papa Shango, tell me that don't look like Papa Shango, is actually Shang Tsung. So they have a fight, and then one of the... Uh, Tar Cotton Warriors ends up as a as a casualty of the acid bath in the Deadpool. And that's pretty much where it ends. So if I had to give it all a letter grade, I would probably give it a C. Mainly be because again, I am very critical and very concerned about Netherrealm in general, in particular what they've done to Shiva. She's my favorite character. What they could try to do with Sindel, possibly trying to retcon her if my instincts are right. And again, they're just... It, I've never been a big fan of this whole time travel theme, right? This whole past meets present and all that in MK11 in general. And I think that more time traveling shenanigans is not going to help. Now you have a f food... Fujin, and now you have Shang, and, and, and I think it's just going to muddle things up even more. But seeing the um, the uh, combat skins, that was nice. That was my favorite part. Um, again, I think Robocop is a solid addition. I just tend to dislike guest characters, but outside of, again, that very high, pitchy uh, Ro Robocop voice that apparently Peter Weller is is behind i don't think there's anything wrong with adding a uh, uh, robocop and to be fair as much as i don't like this version of shiva that they're going to be putting in the game and probably make playable at least shiva is in the game right she's not a character that they often feature so i do have to give them props for that so for me, it's a very, it's very much of a mixed bag. Is basically what I'm saying. There are elements I'm okay with. There are elements I like, and there are a lot of elements that I am very concerned about and critical of, and approach with caution. But anyhow, uh, that's the video. Those are my thoughts. I know it's been a very long one. Please let me know what you all think, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.